Well, everybody, welcome to What Women Binge. We have a special guest this week. We have Lindsay Els here, and I'm so excited. <laughs> and, um, okay, wait. Um, first of all, did I see you? I saw you play at the on-site event. Yeah. yeah and yeah, it yeah. was, you blew me away. Thank you. And that's when I've been, like, um, stalking you ever since. <laughs> Well, and so we were at this wonderful event. It was like out at a farm yeah. or something, mm -hmm. like a big barn or whatever. But we were sitting outside and you gave such a great performance along with a lot of other artists. And do you know what's funny is I don't really know country very well. My I husband is from Alabama and Amazing. like he made me move down here. And um, <laughs> and that was actually one of my first uh, times like seeing like live country music. And it was so fun. But I didn't realize we were sitting with like Thomas Rhett, I think, yeah. was there and stuff. But um, I Thomas haven't... Rhett's like the goat. He's awesome. I didn't know. Like, yeah. I, he, when we left, people, my husband started saying names, and I was like, and then he started telling me songs, and I was like, oh, okay, okay, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I'm still getting an education. That's fine. Aren't we genre. all? Aren't we all? <laughs> Truly. But anyway, wait. I want you to give your own intro. Oh my so, goodness. You know when people are like, "What do you want us to say? Actor, director, me, you know?" So I just want you to give your own intro. What would you say? Okay. Uh, I am a singer, songwriter, musician. Originally from Canada, have been in Nashville now like over a decade, and um, I'm just you know trying to figure out life and take over the world and tour internationally for the rest of my life. I love the take over the world. That's <laughs> great. Okay, and also great. Uh, the, the host or one of the, uh, sorry one of the judges of Canada's <laughs> no got host, host right yeah, host. yeah yeah of Canada's Got Talent. It's been so much fun to like really learn about the world of TV, which <laughs> you know you were born and raised through this, but like I know the world so well as a songwriter, mm -hmm. like writing a song. And going through all of the steps of that and then hoping that your song gets like chosen for the album, then hoping that your song gets chosen for a single and then hoping that that single does anything. And then maybe you'll get a number one and blah, 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 blah. And there's just so many aspects to it. But working on a TV production, it's like that times a hundred, it feels like, because you have a hundred people working on one show, yeah. putting their like blood, sweat and tears into it for a year. A show in the like that, hopes, there's probably like 250 at least. Right, right. In the <laughs> hopes that it people. will be like renewed or yeah. even picked up and then renewed. And it's just like, there's so much on the line and it just has made me like have so much respect. Like I've always had respect for the television industry, but it's just gave me so much more respect. It's so for funny because like, I look at it the opposite. I'm like, <laughs> I'm part of this machine with all these people and like just putting in this little tiny bit, but I want to create something the way you can create a song. Like how I have to, like my husband's a songwriter and I've never asked him this, but like, <laughs> how do you start? Like, how do you start? Do you start with lyrics? Do you start with, like I watched the movie Rocket Man, And so mm -hmm. like, I know that like, you know, Bernie would write um, what the lyrics and, mm -hmm. and and Elton would write the piano or vice mm -hmm. versa the melody but, yeah like so how do you how do you start what do you do what's the process it's so different every day really like I just came from a write and it's it's just it it depends a lot if I'm writing by myself or if I'm writing with other co writers in the room and um, oftentimes I start with the music like I'll come in with an idea and whether it'll be you know here's a little chorus idea or or here's a little lyric idea. Usually my ideas start from, you know, I'll play something on guitar or I'll think of a melody in the shower or something okay. or walking my dog mm -hmm. and I'll be like, oh, I could I could build that into a cool song. But sometimes I'll just ha like hear somebody say something or see something on TV and, and I'm like, oh, that's a cool song idea. Oh. And then I'll start like writing it out and then, you know, the song will hash out. You know, I can that. never, like you just said like you hear a melody or you're thinking of a melody as you're walking down. I'm like, I only think of other people's music. I could never create my own. Like, I could never, I don't know, I don't, like, hum my own songs or so. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, my brain doesn't work like that. That's so wild You don't even to like me. to watch yourself. <laughs> I <laughs> don't. I mean, why bother? My work is done. It's, it is but what it is. But as a songwriter, I think you have, you have, you have to, to listen to yourself to over, over and over, over again. Yeah. And yeah. play it over and over again. Like, yeah. I get to walk away. I'm like, no, I just you're did. married to it for the rest just, of your life. I was That's just so in true. your homeland. I was just mm -hmm. in Canada and Ottawa shooting a movie. And, like, I'm done with that. I don't. Mm -hmm. I have to go promote it, maybe, and interview, right. do a few interviews about it. But like, I don't have to ever play it again. And I think that's the beauty of it too. You know, sh like shooting these past couple seasons and working on a television production. Like, 
it is kind of nice. Like you work really hard and really intensely for however many weeks or whatever you're up there. And then you can kind of like you walk let away, it flow your down. Down. Yeah. and be like, I-, I wish you the best. Yeah. Compared to, you're right, our job as a songwriter is like crafting that and voicing it and proclaiming it to the world for the rest of our lives. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. And if you're yeah. like lucky if to you get have one of those hits one, that, yeah. Yeah. Play, or numerous ones, but like, you know, if you have that one song that everyone, so do you have like, what's your like one song that everyone wants to hear? Like if you were, getting on stage to play three songs, what would be, like, the one everyone's holding out for? Um, it's it's kind of weird because, like, Criminal was my first, like, solo number one. And then I had a song with Brentley Gilbert called What Happens in a Small Town. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was a, a hit down here in the States. So it, it depends. It depends, like, what audience you're, okay. you're pulling from. And then I have this song called I Don't Love You, which was my single at the beginning of the pandemic. And then trying to work a song called I Don't Love You in the middle of global pandemic, like, good luck. Yeah. And they basically were like, we need to pull this song. But this song has become like a, like an antithesis hit or something. And now it's the song that like fans... They want to hear it. Want to hear it and they request it. And so it never was really a hit on the radio, but at my shows, it's like one of the biggest songs of our set. That's so funny. So it depends. And is there one that like... You just don't want to play. Like, is there, I mean, could you even admit it? (laughs) I mean, yeah. Like, it's funny because coming to town, I mean, I've been playing music ever since I was a little girl. I've been touring and writing songs ever since I was 10. And, and just as anything. My kids are calling me. Don't mind me. Should we pick? Nah, they'll be fine. Okay. Okay. What if they need gas gas money? money. They're fine. Yeah. No, the other one I already (laughs) gave one gas money. Okay. 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 She knows the inside scoop. Okay. Nice. Great. Um, She's figured it out (laughs) as all girls do. Um, (laughs) I, uh, yeah, like from writing from such an early age and even coming to town, I mean, I've been in Nashville now 12 years. And so those first few singles that I released, I'm just like, they're not my favorite. And sometimes those are the songs that fans request because, you know, especially the ones who have been there with me from the beginning and they're not the songs that I play live all the time. Um, I have this really early single called By The Way and I... And I just don't play it a lot because I think it it doesn't have the depth to it that I like really crave as a songwriter now. And so but some fans always request that song. And so I'm just like, okay, I I don't want to I don't want to not play something that they love. You know, that's funny. So and is there something that like you love to play that you want that you like might even play at home on your own? Is there like a song that's like your like people always ask me what character of mine is or like. Picking your favorite child, I'm sure it's like totally like that. But is there one that's what like is your favorite, favorite character? It's Mel from Melissa and Joey. Yeah, she was just so fun. That's she was so awesome. flawed and so silly, and I got to just have so much fun. And actually, when you said like you walk away from it, every other character that I walked away from, I was okay with walking away from. When I had to, when I knew Melissa and Joey was ending, and I had to walk away, I actually grieved her. Like I was never going to know her again. Wow, and that was weird. Because I haven't yeah. really experienced that with many other um, projects, not not to that level anyway, where I was mm-hmm. grieving. Like, I was so sad that I was never going to embody this character again. That's crazy. And it was it was just very strange. So that was, that's the only time. So I was just wondering if, like... That's interesting, though, because I, I think some of my favorite artists are artists that always are reinventing themselves. Like, Justin Timberlake is mm-hmm. a great mm-hmm. example, because you've seen, like, him just constantly reinvent himself, and it's just, like... He gets more brilliant and more brilliant and more talented as it goes along. And you're right. like, how can one dude do so many things? Yeah. It's just like, it's wild. Um, and so I, I do feel like there are versions, like past versions of me that I've like had to mourn in a way and just be like, I'm not that anymore. And you just grow out of it and and hopefully grow into places that fans appreciate and think are cool and want to follow along the journey with. But yeah, um, but yeah I, I do think it's like a a weird grieving process for yeah. sure. Well, it's growing up. If you mm-hmm. said you've been doing this since you were 10. Yeah. How did that start? I started playing instruments when I was really little. Like I, my mom put my brother and I in piano lessons when we were six years old and I picked up the guitar when I was eight. Wait, so were was you a lot. forced to do piano? And did you like it? Uh, kind of forced. It was just like piano was pretty much in my family. Like my mom's dad was this incredible pianist and he had his mm-hmm. ARTC and all of them were classically t- um, trained and 
And so it was like my brother and I were just going to learn. It was expected. Oh. It was expected. And now I am so grateful for yeah. that classical foundation. So I'm that forcing theory. my youngest, and I'm trying to figure out if I'm doing I always refuse to do it because I always heard people tell her I wasn't yeah. forced to yeah. play piano. But I was. Uh, I always heard horror stories. So I was like, I'm not doing that to my kids. But my oldest one on his 13th birthday asked for a piano and yeah. wanted lessons. And so I was like, great. So then the little, the middle one started, did a little bit, and I figured that was enough. The little one, I'm forcing him. And now I'm like wondering if I'm doing damage. But you're telling me I I'm probably like, not. <laughs> like, you know, a little bit of extra encouragement in a certain yeah. direction. And, and then after a few years, like if their interest isn't there, then... You know, maybe yeah. let it go. But I'm giving them the summer off. Totally that's awesome. The summer off. I'm so grateful for it now. But like, yeah, a couple years into my concerto number, whatever, when I was eight <laughs> years old, I was like, this is kind of lame. I want to play Shania songs on the guitar. Uh, and my dad played guitar. And so I asked him to show me something. And the first thing he showed me on guitar was the riff to Stairway to Heaven. Like oh, the little entry riff. And um, the intro lick. And, um, and ever since that, I was just, I was struck like I was taken by this instrument and I loved it so much and and so I just didn't put it down and it became my best friend it became the thing I leaned on when I was a little girl anytime I had like something challenging in school I would always lean on music and songwriting I wanted that so bad and I just it just didn't I don't know. I've tried my whole life to like play the guitar my yeah. husband plays guitar now my yeah, second son is learning guitar yeah. I'm like why can't I know? And then I was like, well, maybe bass. Maybe bass is easier. And then someday I was like, maybe I should learn the harp. That seems <laughs> the harp is hard. So I'm during COVID, like the hardest string. I know. I don't know. Ever. I was like, Dude, it just looks like you just figure out which string to grab and you just grab it. It's beautiful. But I never actually even tried. I I asked a woman, would you teach me? She was like, sure. I never called her again. But um, <laughs> but I did during COVID get my son's piano teacher, and I was like, teach me piano. I've never. I was like, why don't I start basic? Like someone had said to me, with your kids, start linear, right? Like. Mm -hmm. So I started with the piano during COVID. It was so freaking hard. I think I it's love harder, it. though, for adults to learn than kids. Like, kids just absorb things. And they have less distractions. Their brain isn't as full of Yeah, crap. less responsibilities. And so it's like they can focus on this one thing. Compared to now, even, like, I still, like, am taking guitar lessons. Like, not from anybody, but I just, I always try to learn things. Mm -hmm. I read this thing that said, you know, BB King used to take a guitar lesson every day and Celine Dion used to take a voice lesson every day. And I'm like, if the greats still Are push doing, themselves yeah. to learn, you know, you watch like Tom Brady and like, yeah. and, and LeBron and like, and even Michael Jordan, like the, the goats of what they do are always striving and, and pushing to be I better. I just told my kids this the other day. I was like, Tiger Woods still has like a yeah, coach or exactly. you know, a few coaches for different things. And like if, yeah, if they can do it, then because my kids are like, oh, I need to go practice. I know how to play flag football. I'm like, shut up. Get out there. Go yeah, because it's like there's a big part of me that's like, I know how to play guitar and I can I can. This sounds really cocky and I don't mean it that way, but I can like sit in any song and like play it. Yeah. It's not that big of a deal. But if I want to keep pushing myself as a musician and be like. A musician that I look up to or or keep learning from the musicians that I I can listen to and be like, wow, yeah, that's incredible. Then I need to always be learning. Yeah. If I'm not I love it. I'm a practicing learner. every day. Yeah. That's it, right. It's that. just it's so important to me. That's such a big thing for me, too. And this whole growth mind. I've been talking about this for weeks. I've been mm -hmm. reading this book called yeah. Mindset. Yeah. So fixed mindset means like you don't think you can do better than you've mm -hmm. than you can do. Mm -hmm. Like you can just natural ability. But then there's a growth mindset, which is that you can get better every day. And I'm like all about that. It's all about so, like so get better, get better. I love that. But my husband. So I don't think I really was really aware of this, but I think he's been telling my kids this. And he complains about this with certain bands and stuff. But there's only a certain amount of chords in the whole world. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Is this true? Yeah. So how does that work? <laughs> I don't know. With well, let's writing. talk about music, music theory. theory. Music yeah. theory. Here we go. There are twelve notes. Okay. Like in it's just crazy existence. to think of. And all songs known to man are made out of these twelve notes. And you know there are there are certain limited amount of chords, and there are certain limited ways that those chords can go together. And so. When, you know, you, you can go on YouTube or whatever and, and see, like, that compilation of songs that are the same four chords and it goes through, like, 20 hits in a row. And they oh. all are written on the same chord progression. It just happens. I mean, music yeah. has been a thing for so long. Like, you you are going to get similarities well, it's like between that, certain things. What was it? The Ed Sheeran yeah. uh, lawsuit. Court yeah. Yeah, yeah, the lawsuit that just happened. That's what? where I saw it, I yeah. bet. Because he, he said, said something about there's only a certain amount of chords. Right. There's yeah. only a certain amount of chords. There's only a certain amount of notes. And so uh, whether a songwriter is like doing it on purpose or not, it, 
it's it's important like while you're writing it's just songs like to visual arts right. everything th- there are really no original ideas at this right. point mm-hmm. this is what you know? i fought in college when i went to nyu i took a sociology class and i got in a fight with my professor because i was like there's got to be original thought somewhere <laughs> and he's like nope and i got, I got so furious about really? it really i kept trying to prove if I'm you like, can be the the first original thinker to happen uh, i know that but there must have been somewhere someone must have someday at some somehow. i mean i think like Back in Shakespearean times, for sure. But I think now, like, art has just taken on so many influences. You can just, you can see, like, from a painting, oh, this painter was influenced, was by, influenced by this mm-hmm. and this and this. As a guitar player, like, this guitar player was influenced by Hendrix and this and this and this. Yeah. And so who, who influenced you? Uh, you said Hendrix Shania. is my favorite. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Shania, for sure, from a songwriting perspective and just from, like, a female artist standpoint. I mean, she's just such a badass. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, from a guitar player standpoint, like Hendrix, Clapton, Stevie Ray Vaughan, um, a little bit of everything. Very yeah. cool. So how did you end up in now? Do we already? How, no, we haven't got that. We're still at 10 years old. Oh, yeah. well, 10 years old. So you're 10 years old. <laughs> Gosh, you, 10 learned, years you old. did piano, but now you're picking up a guitar. Yeah. I just started playing around locally. I would play anywhere that would have me. And you were writing your own songs at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. They were terrible when I was a 10 year old little girl, but you need to start somewhere, you know? Um, so were my drawings. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. You're a kid. Um, so I would just play anywhere that would have me. And then when I was 13, I met a guy by the name of Randy Bachman from he had this band like BTO and Guess Who, mm-hmm. like Taking Care of Business or American Woman yeah. or all yeah. these classic rock songs. So Randy was the guy who really taught me how to write a song or to sit in the recording studio and he would like play all these jazz chords up and down the neck. Like before I met him, I was super into Shania and Faith and and Garth Brooks and I was just like wanting to be an artist. And then I sat down with Randy and he would play all these like cool chords up and down the neck and I would just be like, Randy, what is that? And so he was the the guy who really got me listening to blues and rock oh. and jazz and like made me just like take a pivot and just dive so deep into that world. And and then I, like, picked up an electric guitar, and I never wanted to put it down. Oh, my gosh. So is this all in Calgary? So this was in Calgary. He um, had a place out in Salt Spring Island, like, out by Vancouver Island, basically. And I would go out there in the summers when I was little, like, 13, 15, 16. Um, on your own, like, camp or something? Like My a- dad would come with me, and we'd go out there for, like, a couple weeks, and he would just— To be with him or to be—and mm-hmm. just get lessons, like, like one-on-one? We were recording. Style. We were writing. Oh, okay. So it was—yeah, it was, yeah, it was the— How did he—how did you guys, like— meet up that seems like kismet I like, met him through a songwriting buddy of mine who was like you need to check this girl out and I had made this like horrible demo CD of <laughs> cover songs and like there's this um, instrumental guitarist he was like one of my favorites when I was little his name is Tommy Emanuel and he's from Australia and he like moves in like the coolest ways when he plays guitar and I was obsessed with him so I covered a few of his songs and but this demo CD was terrible and it had like one of those iron on labels yeah, or whatever yeah. like sticker on labels and um, I hope you have one somewhere. I do, and it's hideous. Frame it, and I frame hope it. it never sees the light of day. But, um, but yeah. So I, I just made this like terrible little demo CD, and then Randy heard my name and was like, "This sounds like a young female Chet Atkins. Like I need to, oh. I need to meet this girl." Um, and because I, I started learning guitar like from a bluegrass camp, like when I was going with my dad. And so from that point up until, you know, when I was 18, 19, 20, I bought a 15 passenger band van and I was just traveling across the country back and forth, just playing By yourself? shows. Yeah. Are from you on your own. I like bless my parents. They let me start traveling by myself when I was 15, 16. And I remember like flying to Toronto by myself and like playing some shows. And and then, yeah, once I got once I was old enough to get my license, I, I just got this really ugly 15 passenger van. That's the best band kind. van because I couldn't afford anything else. And and so it was like what the band would use to travel and what I would drive to high school in. And, and um, so I'd like pull up in this like white creeper van. It looked like. <laughs> um, you want and, some candy? Yeah. And then I just went on. Here's t- my demo. <laughs> there's, a pu- there's a puppy in the back. Come on. Pretty much. Um, and I just I learned how to do my job as a performer. It, like, blew my mind sometimes coming to Nashville how many people had never played shows before. Because mm-hmm. I was like, oh. what? That's that's where I come from. Like, right. the stage the is my home. Oh, my gosh. You're reminding me of, like, Daisy Jones and the Six right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. <laughs> that's so cool. So, um, so, yeah, I just started playing a lot. I went on tour with, like, Buddy Guy, who's this, like, mm-hmm. blues pioneer guitarist And um, when I was little. And then I actually went to L.A. for six months or so. Okay. 
um, just writing. And then somebody's like, I think you'd like Nashville. I think you'd really like Nashville. And so I hopped on a plane and came to town and knew like one person's name on a piece of paper and walked what year off. Was this? This was like when I was 20. Okay. Oh, so um, you've been here a long time then. Yeah. I mean, not, not that you're that. No, I, I yeah, I'm like. <laughs> much younger than me. but uh, Old. Um, just hopping into the room. It feels like at this point. But um, <laughs> no, no, wait, <laughs> let me tell you. Are you 34? Yeah. You are in my favorite. The two of you are right around my favorite age. Like, really? If I could live. I mean, I'm only 47, but probably when I'm 80, I'll say I wish I was 36 like the rest of my life. Really? I, I do feel like at this point in my life, I finally know who I am. Yes. Yeah, and I'm like ready to unapologetically just be it. Well, oh, wait till for forty. Sure. Forty, you'll be like, screw y'all. <laughs> this has been, yeah, my thirties have been great. Yeah, it, it's been great and terrifying at the same time. Like the past <laughs> few years of being in town, like I feel like world's life has been a whirlwind, and I've gotten to tour around the world and accomplish so many cool things. Opening for Shania. Yeah, yeah. Which what? It's like life has come. Oh my like, gosh, that's full circle like, moment that, in so that many just, ways. You're like dream, like when you already when you do what you've wanted to do since you were a little girl. Like, mm -hmm. what comes next? What's the next thing on the bucket list? I mean, it's 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 kind of weird because I think that maybe anybody in the entertainment industry feels this way, but I I just think that you know you have these goalposts that you look down the field towards, and you're so focused on them, and that's all you can think about. And then when you finally reach that goalpost. Then there's like another goal. Post. Yeah, you just well, you open for Shania, and then you want to be Shania. Yeah, there's just always the next thing. Yeah, and so I also think that's something I'm like coming to terms with in my 30s too. It's like, okay, how can you find contentment in you know the journey, as cliche as that is, or the process <laughs> of it, compared to always being let down I guess from like accomplishing your goals accomplishing goals is amazing and right. getting to a point of where you're like oh my gosh I'm opening for Shania Twain that's the coolest thing in the world if my 11 year old self would have known that she would have you know flipped her yeah shit, basically. but <laughs> yeah. yeah um but now you like do something like that and then immediately that inner voice is like okay well what's next yeah what are you doing what, like what's around the next Finding part. the balance between being an ambitious woman and also torturing yeah. yourself with the, I should have done this 10 years ago. 100%. And like even right now at this point in my life, I mean, I'm 34 and a lot of my friends have like gotten married and had babies and are doing all these incredible life things. And I'm like, definitely miss the memo on like <laughs> how a lot of those women organize their life and and yet I'm so grateful to be doing everything I am right now but it's also like this biological clock thing yeah. and That's I'm for like, real. I'm not even married do I want kids I don't know do I have time I don't know it's just funny like, like grass is always greener I've been listening yeah. or I'm, I finished Matthew McConaughey's book yeah uh, kind of hey McConaughey, I think it's McConaughey <laughs> or whatever. So Matthew funny. McConaughey. I don't know. Maybe because we're in the South, it is Matthew McConaughey. McConaughey. Hey, hey McConaughey. <laughs> but he, um, he like, just talks about all of his travels, and mm -hmm. he has this wet dream that he talks about a lot that takes him first to the Amazon and then to Africa, and like he is doing all these like these amazing adventures. Like he goes and visits monks uh, in a monastery and. Like he does these amazing things, and I'm like, and then even when he marries his wife and takes has kids, he goes with his kid. He takes his kids on all the shoots he does, and mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, damn. I mean, I know I did a lot of that in my early 20s, but I feel like I missed like a decade of that. Like I was like, I think I was, I didn't do enough travel, and 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 like maybe didn't focus on my career as much as I should have. But I, it, it's interesting. I just like. I don't know. I'm like jealous that you well, have think, that sort of freedom. I think you can always what if things that of you should have done or you you can, you know, hindsight is 2020. You can always look back and be like, man, if I just would have yeah. fill in the blank. But uh, yeah, I think in this moment, it's like having acceptance for all of the things that we've done and 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 being appreciative of them while like in just not projecting, but like speaking about my own life, I'm just like, well, also not freaking out about like, okay, what do I need to be doing in the next six years? Yeah. And what does that look like? And what does that mean? And, and yeah. you know, and also not knowing the answer to some of those questions, which is like 
very exciting and very yeah. terrifying. Well, I don't know where you land spiritually or not, but, you know, God has a plan for all of us. Totally. And it's all different. You cannot yeah. compare to someone else, which yeah. is really hard, especially as a woman. And yeah. especially these days with social media. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, we have expectations of what a woman's life is supposed to look mm-hmm. like in their 30s. And, yeah, but you got something else going on. God's got bigger plans for you. So totally. you're inspiring a yes. whole bunch of people. Amanda, do you know what I'm obsessed with and I know you're obsessed with? If you're going to say Skims. Skims. You're right. I know you're obsessed with Skims. You talk about it all the time. I know. And it's not just because they sponsor What Women Binge. It's I'm genuinely okay. not. To, yeah, it's so good. We just can't keep it to ourselves. We have to tell everybody. The Fits Everybody Collection by Skims is the greatest. It's like their best kept secret. It's. I don't want to keep it a secret, though. I want everybody just to Everybody needs it. to know. It feels like no other underwear I've worn before. No, they're actually comfortable. There is no spillage. You know, if you've got, like, the back roll, yeah. there's none of that. They it just kind of melts onto your body. Yes. It just fits perfectly. And where have you ever, like, I mean, since being a mom, have you ever really wanted to wear a push-up bra? No. Because I live in the push-up bra. Like, they're where they're supposed to be, where they once were. <laughs> the girls are where they're supposed to be. And I love it. it's comfortable. I don't even think about it. I love it. It's not digging into me. It's not poking anywhere. It's just fabulous. I love it. That and the t-shirt bra. Yeah. Oh, that's what I wear because I need something like low cut with some of my dresses. Mm-hmm. And having the low cut bra was like really helpful for me. It's the greatest. And I, th- I feel like I was like the last person to try Skims, but I want to go scream it from the mountaintops. It's so great. I'll never go back. I know. Skims is creating the next generation of underwear for literally every everybody. Body. It's amazing. Everybody. So the Fits Everybody collection of underwear is super lightweight. It molds to your body. It's buttery soft and stretches literally up to twice its size without ever losing its shape. It goes right back. It washes amazingly. It's in sizes XXS to 4X. That means everybody. Everybody. From teeny tiny all the way up. It is perfect. So you guys can believe the hype. Skims has over 90,000 five-star reviews for a good reason. The Fits Everybody collection and more Perfect Fit Essentials are available now at skims.com. Plus, get free shipping on orders over $75. After you place your order, be sure to let them know that we sent you. Select podcast in the survey and let them know in the drop-down menu that What Women Binge is where you heard it. Yes, please do that. And thank you, Skims, for sponsoring our show. You're kind of like, I was going to say, like, you're like mother to all your fans. <laughs> <laughs> you get to like, I mean, sometimes I kind of feel like that. Them. I'm like you mother of my, my band. <laughs> mother of your band. I'm like mother I love that. to like the boys in my band. Like, and I'm like, all right, come on, everybody. Like, yeah, I used to sing. The thing is, I Make can't Make good sing. decisions, everyone. <laughs> yeah. We did an episode where I talked about my experience on Mass Singer recently. Yes. I did the Mass Singer because I cannot sing. And it's like, I like really cannot sing. And That's the only people true. I ever sang to were my kids. That's amazing. But there was one point. In all of their lives when they went, oh, maybe you should stop. Like at first they're like, mommy, <laughs> sing to me, you know, when they're really little. Yeah. Sing to me, sing to me. Sing. And then all of a sudden one day it goes, oh, oh, stop. Oh, stop. No, <laughs> just no. You know, and now I'm like, now I'm like forbidden from singing. So I guess like I think about like all those little ducklings out there and you get to sing to them. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's just something I can't even imagine. So it's it, just a beautiful thing. That's it sweet. is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely am grateful to... Um, be able to do what I love. Just as, I mean, look at you both, you know? <laughs> yes, I'm a stay-at-home mom with a podcast. Amen. Oh, please. She's also like uh, <laughs> interior designer, weather girl, gardener, yeah. extraordinaire. Like, L- like living the dream. Mom. By the way, PTO mom is something I would never, I can't Oof, believe that's you. I mean, PTO mom. Not anymore. I was. Oh, okay. She gave it up, luckily, so yeah. I get her back. But because that's a, that's a full-time, talk about a full-time job that's like an ungrateful, like, People are just not grateful. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> totally. You get yelled at by a lot of people. Yeah, I can adults, only kids. imagine. <laughs> it's it's not nearly as fun as it sounds. Yeah. I'm writing a series about it because it's just such a wild. You are? Wild, wild, uh, please do, actually. I have a lot of uh, research I can Quite, I, mean, I know. Amazing I plan, on, I plan yeah. on asking you to help me out a lot there. Well, we have some questions that we ask everybody. We I love it. ask you. I'm so, I'm so in. These are our season seven questions. Okay. Um, do you have a favorite cartoon or did you when you were young? Yeah, Roadrunner. Oh, yeah. Roadrunner and Coyote. Mimi. Yeah, Mimi. I just loved, <laughs> it's probably because I'm a workaholic and I just like 
go through life and I feel like I'm Roadrunner most working since she was day. 10 years old. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. I just connected to Roadrunner when I was like yeah. really, really little. That's so I funny because like he doesn't speak. I know. So that's that hilarious. Is also, I no one ever that. dies. It's great. Right. Doesn't that's, he, that's probably well, the thing I love about it. They get anvils dropped on them a lot. Just nobody dies. Yeah. And they're just like an imprint in the It's like eternal life in a way. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Optimism. Yeah. Um, is there an article of clothing you can't live without? This is such a hard question because it's like <laughs> there's a m- multiple there's so things. Many. I mean, I got I came here and I got given like warm, comfy socks. That's the amazing. Best. Only because we have to cover our feet because our friends at Wiki Feet sometimes raid us. <laughs> got it. Got so it. we don't want to yeah. be raided on Wiki uh, Feet sometimes if we have a bad never, manicure or pedicure. Never, yeah, we, we never want that. Um, probably like a crop top or something. Oh, yeah. Like, is there something like you have to have on the bus or like when you're on tour or something? Do you have to like? Or even yeah. like a blankie or something. Comfort Cardi. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like I live in a hoodie most of the time. I'm surprised I didn't even walk in here. I guess it is summer. But even in the middle of summer, I'm like always in a hoodie. And on the bus, they keep it so cold on oh, the yeah. bus. So I'm in a hoodie like about. 24-7. I feel like sound stages. I mean, I know sound stages, they keep them cold because the lights make it hot and yeah. everybody gets sleepy. But it doesn't make sense. Like being in the South, by the way, is the most confusing thing. It is because, so confusing. Yeah. Air conditioning is so cold and it's so hot outside. It's colder than it is in the winter. And yeah. yet everyone's complaining about winter down here. Like I get here from Canada. Yeah. You can understand from New York. Totally. You know, yeah, spend we know a lot what winter is. We know what snow yeah. is. Yeah. And I'm okay with like a little bit of heat in the winter. Yeah. And a little bit of air in the summer. Right. But I don't need it to be 50. It doesn't need to be like extreme. I don't understand yeah. why I'm all of a sudden in the Arctic. Because it's 90 degrees out. It can still just be like 72. Totally, yeah. I know. Like it doesn't have to be 65. What do you keep it set at? 68. In the day? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can see at night. Like, well, we okay, sleep I with guess the in the day, it probably does get a little warmer in the day. Probably 70. Yeah. <gasps> we drop it to cold. 68 to sleep, for sure. I, I like it around 74. My husband's always dropping it to about 66, 68. That's 66 is yeah. cold. And it's Thankfully, brutal. Thankfully, my boyfriend likes the house, like, hot. He, like, runs at, like, 74, too. And I was like, Ugh. we're great. Yeah. No, <laughs> but I the like bus that. runs, like, 68 oh, all yeah. the time. And I'm like, uh-uh. But you're Canadian, so what's this in Celsius? Like, uh, we're talking about, like, 18? Very good. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, cold. Nah. It's, like, way no. too cold. <laughs> I Pretty much, I, I dress like a 12-year-old boy all the time. I'm in, like... High top sneakers. I'm usually in like cargo pants and a hoodie. Your hoodie. That's like Do you my... wear a beanie a lot too? I love wearing beanies. <laughs> if I could wear beanies all summer long, it would be like my See, my hat. Oh, there you go. Maybe that's your article of clothing. Okay, I love it. <laughs> I can't I can't wear hats. I just, I don't really? know. I think, because I don't like my hair to stick out of them. And without my hair sticking out, I just think I look like a, Maybe a 12 year old boy. I don't know. Yeah, I, can't I just hats embrace the 12 year old boyness. Like, I just, if I can walk out of the house and put on a beanie and a walk out and not need to do my hair. But you're it's so like, cool. I don't and think like I've feminine. Worn a I feel like you, no, yeah. you would just look like you're that girl who's like the awesome, like kind of surfer <laughs> chick. I, however, would look like I was trying so hard. Like, I don't know. I think you wearing a beanie, put some sleeves on. It. Come yeah. out to Lake Tahoe. We'll throw I'll you in a beanie. I'll try it. And the only place I'll wear. Laugh. Send me a picture. Okay. Okay. I'll wear a beanie in Lake Tahoe like that. Or like in dark, like, <laughs> like, w- like oh, winter. I know what like. you are. You're like the PacSun or the Delia's catalog when we were teenagers. Val Surf in, ca- in That's California. That's all I ever wanted to be. <laughs> That's all you ever wanted to oh, be? Delia's. It was I not in me. Delia's. Girl, like as much as I wanted to be what that happened cool kid, to Delia's? Yeah. Is that even, a, is that? I don't think it exists anymore. Well, it was like one of the first like young girl catalogs. Yeah. Like that was. Yeah. Oh, it was amazing. Awesome. That but Urban Outfitters. That. That, that's what she yeah, embodies you are right Delia's. here. That's true. And I am, I'm not. Yeah. I am like straight up Alabama you, housewife. You are. No. I was that at 12 years old though. Like, but you're like, she's like bright you're colors. Like, and, yeah. I was going to say you were like glam, glamming. If you're this like is housewife, flare. your husband should be like, I won the lottery, <laughs> man. <laughs> it's like, fit, you're like a fit and flare kind of girl. Yeah. Right? I like, a, yes. I'm an A-line dress. You've got all the right. Purse. That's yeah. totally. Yes. You've got I can't it, like, be cool though. As much as I want to be cool, cool. But that's your style. See, I babe. can't be that. I don't know what I am. I w- I've always wanted to be goth. Is this too hard? I just can't Why do all that eye, hard? The yeah. eyeliner, the it's black nail polish, makeup. the chips. It's yeah. a lot of like a lot of layers. Yeah, a lot of, layers. Yeah. A lot of that's, jewelry. It's, a lot it's of heavy. Commitment. It's I hard like, to take off at the end of the day. Yeah, the boots yeah. have to lace up. Did it's you ever do the scene kid thing? The what? Like the scene kid thing? No. Okay. Well, you were on the road working at that point. Well, I was still at home. 
Oh, because you were on the scene. Uh, it's like the so like what's like the hardcore music emo. and they had like emo oh, stuff where emo. they had all the layers and the hair. No, I wish these I little did. guys right here that poked up. I don't know what these little guys. <laughs> and all is. the eyeliner. What is that? What do you mean? Like a crap? Well, it was like hair, and like oh. you purposely would cut it. <laughs> what? To a few yeah, pieces. So you had little guys, and they would like. Oh, people did that on purpose. Yeah, yeah, that was the thing. And I had like four colors in my hair at one time. I'm so out of the loop, really? Oh that yeah. Cool? We, I, it really what it was is we were non-conforming conformists. Right, oh. right, you know, right, right, right. There was yeah. a standard of seeing kids. If like, you were in this group. style, okay, yeah, yeah. Like if you're in this specific group, you look like this, but, but we're we not going to look like everyone else. Normal things. Yeah, you weren't doing right. like the usual like Seattle grunge flannel around the waist. Oh no, kind no, of no. Thing. we had yeah. like twelve tank tops on, and you know, That's our, twelve. Amazing. Oh, but then you had like your own group of kids. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she was on the scene. The scene. Now the we know. Scene. Now yeah. We know. Wow. I, I just know. feel so educated. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you like to drive or to be driven? I love to drive. You do too? I Me love too. to drive. Yeah. Like anytime I'm traveling, I mean, obviously if we're, you know, well, you said a big you took group the van. of people or whatever. Yeah. And I was usually always the driver. I was the DD. This is probably, yeah, it dates back to my childhood. But even when I'm, like, traveling, I'm in L.A. or whatever, I love, like, renting a car. That's what I do. Driving. So, wait, do you get car sick? Because I think that might be the main reason why I like to drive. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I don't get car sick as much as, like, on a cruise. I get, like, really Ooh. motion sick. Ooh. So maybe a little bit of that. Yeah, I think that yeah. that's my thing is, like, I don't, I never, like, vo I don't get to the point where I'm going to vomit or something. Yeah. But it just makes me feel yucky. And I'd rather just, and I don't know if it's, a, it might be a control freak thing. Yeah. But it might just be like a nausea thing where I just, it's better if I just drive myself there. I'd rather not drink. So just if you to drive go out myself. somewhere with your family, will you drive and your husband won't? It depends. If, okay. Yeah. It depends on which car we're taking usually. Okay. If yeah. it's his big old pickup. Yeah. If it's my son's pickup, I'll drive that. Okay. I prefer to drive the Dodge Ram than the yeah. GMC Sierra. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they're very different drives. It's just in. Yeah. I but if we're taking it. the Lincoln, I'm driving. <laughs> Got it. Got it. <laughs> like Matthew McConaughey. McConaughey. And my Lincoln. Hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> hey. Um, what was your first concert? Was it Shania? My first concert ever was Metallica. <gasps> <gasps> nice. No way. We were. My son wants to go to Metallica so really? bad. We were just talking about that last night. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, gosh, that's like probably where the inner rock in me was born. But um, but it was my first concert ever. And then Shania was like my second or third concert. Yeah. So How old were you? It was. I was ten. That's awesome. Did you have a lot of shows come through Calgary? I'd imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Because Calgary was, you know, a pretty big, a big city, city growing up. And I so, love that. I shot my movie Holiday in Handcuffs, in mainly in Banff. Well, I like to say Banff. In Banff. Yeah. yeah. Banff is one of my favorite places on the oh, planet. It's, it's so, so beautiful. Cool. They rented me a house up there on like an abandoned old ski so mountain. magical. So I got to like walk up the ski mountain that's and they were just that, like. That's amazing. I know. It was really cool. And it was snowing. And I learned a few phrases up there that I love. Um, first of all, I learned about a horse frost. Yes. So it's like when horror frost, horror frost. Sorry, so not a horse. No, frost. It's, it's a horse. <laughs> That's a very frost. different thing. Yeah. <laughs> very different. Horse horror frost. <laughs> yes, is when it's H O A R or something like that. I think it's spelled differently. Yeah, it is spelled differently. It's I'm like the worst speller ever. But yeah, <laughs> it's like when it comes down, like when it gets the temperature drops so quickly and like dew just freezes. Mm -hmm. So it's really pretty. Everything becomes like silvery white, yeah. like in a movie. And like, like on the trees, like all of them get like co coated with like frost. It's so beautiful. And then that I learned about awesome. a Chinook. Yeah. Because we were flying Get in. Her. I had a bunch of Canadian. I was sitting in first class with my new baby on my lap. He was one. And I'm holding him on my lap. And uh, I was with all these guys in suits. Didn't realize at the time they were all big hockey players. Mm -hmm. They were going up. Someone was retiring their jersey and all mm -hmm. the buddies were coming up. And so they start talking. One of them held my baby while I went to the bathroom. But then the pilot comes on and says, uh, I'm going to need the flight attendants to be seated because we have a Chinook. And I was like, Wait, what? That sounds serious. Like, because I think the only thing I knew was like a helicopter in the in the military here is called a Chinook, and I was That's like, funny. "What's a sh oh my god? Is everything?" Good? And I'm a nervous flyer. I'm like, "Are we gonna die? What's going on? It's like tornado. <laughs> What's going on? What are we getting?" And they're like, "No, no, no. It's just like this low pressure system, right?" Mm -hmm. So. It's like a big, warm air mass that comes over the mountains, and it can swing the temperature in like 50 or 60 degrees in a day. Yeah. So it can be like really freezing when you wake up in the morning, and then all of the snow melts, and it feels like summer in the afternoon. That's what Chinook and Inuit, I believe, mm -hmm. means snow eater or snow melter. Oh, that's, that's what I, someone I started looking it up because I'm like, like I need to know okay. what a Chinook is. Miss terminology. Yeah. Well, now I want a husky and I want to name it Chinook. Chinook. Like ever since you then, cannot like, have a husky I snow want eater. I No. I'll keep oh it in my God. I'll keep it in my 68 oh, degree yeah. house. Yeah. Well, How that's about true. that? That's true. Right? That's I just won't let it outside, you just poor thing. Give it like a block of ice to lay on all summer long. <laughs> there you go.
<laughs> um, what is a show you weren't allowed to watch as a kid? Like, was there anything off limits? You know, my parents were pretty amazing at just like, I mean, we obviously had rules, but um, but like letting us kind of just be exposed to like a lot of good content. But I do remember the first thing that comes to my mind when you say that. I do remember watching Independence Day oh. and I was so freaked out like aliens my imagination just went wild and I don't think I slept for a week and so anything with aliens in it for probably like I I was pretty young at that time but probably for three or four five years after that was just like off limits yeah because I just wasn't good to sleep for a (laughs) week that's what I would would just like lie in my bed being like is an alien outside my room oh my gosh it's so funny so so yeah aliens. aliens were like I'm out, man. <laughs> I mean, you were near the Dakotas. So right. Maybe that's exactly. Yeah. They were coming Even for you. Even still now, I'm just like, when I watch alien shows, I'm like, if I have to travel by myself, oh, no. I'm like, ah! <laughs> Oh, no. That's so funny. <laughs> um, do you have something on your summer? Like, what's your summer reading list looking like? Do you read a lot? So I do love reading. I love reading so much. Recently, I've just gotten into a lot of audiobooks because I feel like I'm like moving so fast that I can read a lot more books yeah, more quickly, just like listening to them. Um, I've been listening to this book called Outlive by Dr. Peter Attia, and he talks about, I'm kind of a health nut, and he talks about like our lifespan, but more specifically our health span, oh. and what are things that we can be doing to like preserve the health span of our life. So you're saying I shouldn't our have had these chocolate-covered pretzels for my no, lunch? No, no, it's all balance and moderation, because he talks about like it's— Like, obviously exercise, it's obviously diet, but it's also emotional well-being. And it's also, like, how you train. And, like, training, um, I'm, like, not fully done it yet, but he he said, like, training so that when you reach 100, if we're all fortunate enough to, like, reach 100, you you train for your— centurion decathlon so like when you're a hundred if you were to want to perform all of these things yeah what shape would you need to be in in your 50s in your 40s in your yeah. 30s in to order get there. to be able to like lift a carry on suitcase in the plane to be able to oh, hike be rita moreno hill. we had rita moreno on and yeah. she's now 91 but when we had her she was Incredible. 90 and she's just like walking, dancing, yes. her eyesight, her hearing, everything is totally. spectacular. She's amazing. It's that. And so he he basically breaks it down and he's like, okay, if you were to make a goal of a whole bunch of things you want to do when you are 91 or 100 or whatever, then you you work yourself backwards and you're like, okay, if you want to be able to pick up a 30-pound suitcase when you're 100, then you need to be able to pick up a 100 pound suitcase or whatever now oh those gosh, numbers this are is just my this is my next book I, I but it's wait. amazing it's like blowing my mind Wait, it's so outlive or outlive Out, outlive okay yeah okay l-i-v-e so all right yeah. yeah yeah all right what, else? what about Anything you what's else? your favorite book? well i'm trying to get in some colleen hoover i've been okay. trying i've had it sitting on the shelf and i just haven't but everybody's obsessed and I'm, yep. i mean just yesterday text from my mom hey have you read verity like yeah like all right maybe i need to get into that you this need summer. to read verity but i know but i'm not really like you said i'm not really reading right now i'm more listening to because i'm driving around so much yeah but once I actually like go away and sit somewhere, I hope I'll pick up a book. But I just haven't in a while. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Everybody goes through phases of that. I think. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I go through phases where I'm doing puzzles. I just saw a meme that was like, uh, I think I'm getting to that point in life where I'm ready to take over my dining room table with a puzzle. For That's fun. Me. Yeah. That's me. I love it. <laughs> That's I like, love it. You know what? This, it's the gratification of like being done, like finishing a book or putting that puzzle piece, finding yeah. that match. Right. Or like, and we're used to these hits of dopamine from our phones mm-hmm. and like, liking something or accomplish oh I should book that flight and I can do that right now totally. or answering that email and you get a dopamine hit and I think puzzles really fill that for me that's amazing <laughs> though I don't really accomplish anything at the end of it but it looks like I do I feel like I, I mean do. you accomplished a puzzle that's accomplishing something mm, I like it especially if it's a group activity like over a glass of wine with yeah friends yeah over a weekend a ski weekend oh right oh my gosh that's perfect up in Banff up in the mountains in like Louise. A, yeah I'll puzzle? sit in the house. Yeah. I'll keep the puzzle company. <laughs> she'll, she'll decorate. She'll like put floral arrangements everywhere. Yeah, I'm so It'll in. be beautiful when you It'll return. It'll be beautiful. <laughs> we'll have some arts and crafts ready when she gets back. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a movie franchise that you love the most? Gosh, it's so hard to choose. I mean, growing up, I really loved The Office. Okay. Oh, yeah. I was like a huge Office fan. Um. Obviously, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Oh, really? That? Yeah. Of course. It was like Thank you. Nobody said that. Really? <laughs> yeah. It was like so formative. Like my brother and I in um in Canada, I, I'm pretty sure it was called TGIF. Yeah. 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 
And so it was like our thing. Like every Friday we'd get like popcorn ready and snacks no and we'd like sit by the TV and just like watch like four hours, like that all of the me programming. That was 90210. I was like really? that 90210. I, it was a bowl of cookie dough. But yeah, every Wednesday night while I was yeah. shooting my show Clarissa, I'd be like Wednesday night was probably one of the only nights that was predictable that I could get home in time to watch something. Yeah. And just happened to be 90210. And That's I would amazing. sit there and watch usually by myself because I didn't have a lot of girlfriends on that show. That's uh, but I know. Story of my life, man. <laughs> just being surrounded by when all you grow these up boys in a on the road. Yeah. <laughs> boys on exactly. the road. Exactly. I'm like, I've... Grown up with boys in a band van since I was 15 years old. So I've pretty much heard. And it you all. have a brother. And I have a brother. Do you have a sister? No. I just have so one. you and your brother. brother. Mm-hmm. Uh, so and he's amazing. By boys. And it's like we've gotten closer as I moved down to Nashville. But yeah, I've been surrounded by boys. Yeah. So it's opposite for me. I grew up around all girls. Mainly really? I have one brother, but I have seven sisters, six sisters. That's crazy. But then I have three boys now and I have all right. these nephews. And like, right. all of a sudden it's like it shifted. Even the dogs in my house are boys. Like I. That's like, crazy. I'm surrounded one of by your boys dogs now. Is a girl. It's a, one of them is now. Yeah. I had to get a girl. Yeah. Because I was like, okay, now I have little boys, boy dogs. And I know. so one passed away. I'm like, girl, girl dog. Like, I need an ally <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I need something. Um, is there uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. oh, okay. A little personal. This one always I'm I always get embarrassed asking this one. Um what do you like to read on the porcelain throne? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or do or watch. Or, do or, yeah. I mean, we, man, we know what you're doing, but what do you? I mean, I always say like, yeah, not to get too personal, but like girls always like do their thing and like go. And like guys <laughs> seem to like they hang. linger, sit in and linger. So me, I'm like, I don't know, like editing an Instagram post and yeah. then I'm like, everybody's on their like, phone now. Yeah. yeah That's like, true. it's like a, f- a quick little. Oh, so edit. now we know when you're on Instagram. No, I'm just kidding. I, yeah, <laughs> I, guess, I guess so. But also, it's like, it's it's usually so quick yeah. that I'm just like, I'm doing my thing and then I'm moving on. Yeah, I'm you're moving not on. wasting time in there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Once exactly. I once 100. I had kids, though, that's like the one place. Well, actually, really? as soon as you go in the bathroom, though, they're yeah. knocking on the door, opening the door, right. and stuff. Fingers too, so. under the door. There's, yeah. <laughs> Sliding things. Hey, mom, look mom! at this. Sign this. Do this. Yeah. It's yeah, like if cat. you're one piece and quiet, yeah. I, can. I have I have one kid who's just a creeper. I mean, he is just around every corner. He's just hiding out. I have I'm from New York. I like don't get scared by things. Like loud right. noises happen and you kind of go, What was that? You don't yeah. like what's that? You know, like right. in New York, you don't jump. You just sort of, okay, calmly just right. check out the situation and fix it. Yeah. Or run. But um but with my little one being like, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've been changing in my closet and he mm. walks in and is just like Hey. And I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> but he's obsessed with Five Nights at Freddy's. See, he, when he gets asked That's these amazing. questions, when he's older, it'll be the thing he was not allowed to watch was Five Nights at Freddy's because he gets so scared, but he also loves to scare people because of it. That's He does all these jump scares, and it's and he's obnoxious. And he, does, he walks in during other things, too. Is <laughs> <laughs> what age will he be allowed to watch it? Yeah, I lie. He's he's okay. allowed to watch it. He okay, shouldn't. Okay, okay. He shouldn't. Okay. But yeah. uh, and we we're always like, get off that. Get off. His big brothers have a really hard time with it. Yeah. His 17-year-old brother is terrified of it. Actually, he really? didn't sleep in his bed for four months at the age oh of 12 gosh. because of this Five Nights at Freddy's thing, which now I think they're making a movie. They're making a feature. That's crazy. So we'll have to bring Tucker. He was our Sp- Stranger Things specialist this year. We'll Amazing. have to bring him back in when Five Nights at Freddy's movie comes out. I think probably next summer. But Incredible. He um he loves like horror and Godzilla and King Kong. My other boys, like the scariest thing they ever got into is pirates. Yeah, yeah. And pirates of the... Caribbean movies. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, not yeah, yeah. Pirates in general, just those movies. Right. <laughs> pirates in general could yeah. be kind of scary. Pirates in general. They, scary. True. Pirates Especially when in they're real the life skeleton. Are, yeah, version. yeah. Yeah. Do you want to ask whether this or that? Yes, I do. We have some rapid fire, this or that. I love rapid fires. <laughs> love rapid fires. <laughs> no pressure. Right. Broadway or movie? Mmm, so hard. <laughs> I guess I'll go movie just because I watch more of them. That's fair. Winter or summer? Summer. Amen. All of the time. <laughs> All of the time. From Canada. From Canada. Have had enough of winter for the rest of my life. That's, yes. <laughs> brunch or happy hour? Ooh, I will always say brunch, man. I love a good brunch. Mm-hmm. It's so fun. Breakfast, Nashville is the place for My too. favorite time of day. My favorite, favorite meal of the day. here? Oh, man, there's so many great brunch places. Like, Milk and Honey is so good. They have mm. a great brunch in the Gulch. That one's always so busy, though. I like. I, I think it's line. always so busy. I think yeah. across the street is my favorite, Marsh House. Oh, yeah, it's Marsh in a hotel. House is amazing. I love that one. They have, like, a, I think they have a fried oyster Benedict. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. So good. I'm actually, I think I might need that right we now. We just yeah. went to the Treehouse in yeah, yeah, East yeah. Nashville. Yeah, the Treehouse is amazing. Their brunch was 
phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, this is yeah. the town for, guys, if you're coming to Nashville, make sure you make yeah. your brunch reservations. You could just yes. do like a brunch tour. <laughs> yeah, you could. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sugar or fake sweetener? Sugar, man. I have been through the fake sweetener uh, whirlwind and like carousel and I've just come back to a nice See, and they just came out with some research that says don't do sweetener anymore do sugar but the problem now for me is that I have that like liquid stevia yeah and it just dissolves quickly and there's nothing to stir or and now I don't I don't think I can get rid of that I don't think I can get rid of my liquid stevia just 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 do a little thing of like simple syrup oh I would do that yeah. Oh, so I carry around my own simple syrup. Yeah. That'll be fun. Just your little own simple syrup dispenser. <laughs> yeah. I'll do it. People already think I'm putting CBD and crap in my... Yeah. They're always like, what is that? I'm like, just sweetener. It's just sweetener. Calm oh, down. I know. You look at my suitcase and I have like tinctures and supplements <laughs> and I'm like traveling with all this <laughs> Let's see. Sitcom or drama? Mm. Oh, man. I love both of these. If I have to choose one... Or television variety show. right now, this moment. You know. I guess I'll choose sitcom. Okay. I mean, I, I love a good drama, but um, but if I had to choose, like if only one could live on for the rest of life, I guess yeah. I'd have to have a sitcom. Yeah. All right. CSI or Law & Order? Ooh. CSI. Just because I, I grew up with it. <laughs> and I like watched it more. My dad loved CSI. And so yeah. I would always like sit on the couch and watch so it. Which one did it. you die in? I, no, I didn't die. <laughs> I've only died in a Lifetime movie. It's the only time I've ever died. Really? Um, yeah. The one I did last year called Dirty How Little Secret. How did you Secret. die? Oh, the first oh. I had an what asthma you... attack and then stuff fell on me. In her horde. She spoiler. Was crazy. Yeah, yeah, it was spoiler. Fun. That was a fun. That was actually a really fun movie for me, character-wise. But um, That's crazy. I was in Law & Order SVU. That's All right. right. So really... Vinyl or Spotify or streaming? Oh. I will say vinyl's my favorite thing. I mean, just there's like a creaminess of vinyl that you can't. Ooh, I you like can't replace, creaminess. but um, but right now I'm gonna choose Spotify and streaming because it's like changing the world and the fact that like you can you can record a song in your living room and in within like seven clicks you can literally release it so the whole world can hear it mm. is fascinating. It's, and it's really amazing. Cool. Is that easy? And it's, it is that easy, and it makes like music very accessible and and also you know let us lets us tour in. Europe and Australia and Asia and all these places that without streaming, it would be a lot more difficult to get our music heard. So oh I'm like streaming all that. the way, baby. That's awesome. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. All right. So classics or new releases? Ooh, I have to go classics if I have to choose. I mean, they're just like, yeah. you can't. You can't go wrong with classics. No. And as we talked That's about, like classics. all new releases are like from inspired by and inspired by. Yeah. Yeah. Classics. So, yeah. yeah. Classics. That's so cool. That's awesome. All right. Well, do you have your phone? Yeah. We have to ask you um, a question. We, this is when we judge no. people. I'm we ask, really, it's to judge me. Okay. <laughs> really just to make fun of Amanda. Okay. Um, well, we just decide who whose person are you, hers or mine. Um, okay. How many unread emails do you have? I knew this was coming. Okay. <laughs> so this has been like a wild... A wild past year because if you would have asked me this in January, I would have said I have 17,800 and whatever oh, emails. She's my people. She Or she was. I think we're going to go But on. now I have six. Six? Oh, I wish I had six. She's a recovered, my people. Yeah. I'm a recovered. And it was a problem. And like, thanks to my boyfriend who is like so... So OCD and like beautifully like organized OCD about so many things in life. He was like, "Did he sit down? Dude, with you? you have to." He just taught me how to clean it up because I was just so deep in the wells of swimming in seventeen thousand emails yeah. that I was just like, I can't even begin to do it. And so, but you, so how many emails um, do you have in your phone? Yeah, currently, yeah, twenty four thousand nine hundred and fifty. So here's the thing. Oh, Lordy. you can do this. You can do this. What you do is... We've been trying for like a year and a half. Let okay. Good luck. What you do is you go through the junk mail is first, like is the first thing to go. So you like... That's what most in, of it is. Exactly. So you type in whatever. I don't know what brand names I can say and not say in the show. So oh, you type in whatever makeup company that sends you a lot of emails. And then you get all those emails and you're like, this is all trash. And you trash like a thousand emails right there. And then you type in another company. And so I went through like just junk mail for a long time. And that That's got rid of like though, half of them. I get rid of junk mail probably once a month. I go and look at my yep. junk mail. I mean, I have it set to delete 
after a few weeks right. or something anyway. But I'll go through it just to see if there's anything that's not junk. Totally. Just to make sure I'm not missing anything and then move it over. And then I just trash the rest of it. But I should unsubscribe to certain things. You should like, unsubscribe. I and do. there's so much junk that ends up in your inbox that doesn't deserve to be there. Oh, no, train everything. It, train it to go to the junk. But I check it so often that I just read what I need to read and then the rest just stays there. I know. And I, but it's I know, the but I will there say, part that's a if problem. you can fight through it, it is so much happier of a life. Well, last year, oh, she, see? I got so tired of her. Making fun of me for this. And so I just deleted them all. She deleted everything, but she didn't change anything. She also obviously didn't. I And what if you need those emails? Well, she knew she didn't, I guess. Did you delete everything in your inbox or just the un? Oh, no, you clicked red. That's no, what you did. I clicked. Oh, is that what you I did? You clicked that it was red. Not that you del She didn't delete them. They're still That's there. That's what I did. She I marked actually, everything. Wait, wait, wait. Now well, let's and what that. you can Hold do on. is you can take like everything past a couple years ago and archive it. So you can say red and just put it in your archive because yeah. then it's like little pieces of data that don't take up a lot of space. And then it's in your archive. And so if you ever need to look back on it, it will be there. Okay. But it won't be like in your immediate inbox. I don't know how to know. I was going to look at the number. I think you can only do it on your computer where you look and you see how many actual emails you have versus how many just unread. Right. Oh, like, I think no. I have... That's a thing. Wait, where is that? I know it's here somewhere. Like I think in it's your on inbox? my computer. Yeah. yeah. I think my inbox on my computer is something like 20,000, but I only have 61 unread right now. Oh, I'm very That's proud great. of y'all. <laughs> I know. I just <laughs> checked my email before I came in here, but I'm just, I'm very committed to now being like, okay. Done, done, And that's done. the thing. Like, I wake up and the first thing I do is delete the ones I right. don't need for the day. And then right. one by one, I pick them off. See? By... Or you just pick it up and go, oh, I need to read that one. <laughs> no, so I, will say, delete, 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 then I will say, though, the thing that I'm bad at is text messages. <gasps> really? Oh, what's that what at? bad at? So I have, like, 58 unread text messages. Oh, she's right up now. there with Candace. Well, right now, because I've been in here for a bit, I'm at 37. Yeah. I'm at 15, I think. 11. Not, but most of mine is my kids trying to harass me. And, Mom, well, give me money. Mom, nice. can I go to this party? Our Mom, friend Candace, Candace King, she's an actress. Yeah. She's been here several times now. And every time we know that she her emails hundreds, will be caught up. Right? But her text messages. Yeah. Which yeah, is the one I that never, I can't handle. I, I have, can't. Oh, I can't catch up. And like that, you can't go through and like That's what you do on the mail. toilet. I guess so. Check your text. I do it on planes a lot of the time. Yeah, yeah, on planes, I, I go on through. Planes too. You know, yeah. my phone, my computer got bogged down. Turns out my computer was like a quarter or an eighth of the memory of my phone. Mm -hmm. And my phone was getting bogged down and my family memory, iCloud was getting bogged. My husband's like, you're going to have to get your own iCloud. But it was mainly my text messages because of yeah. GIFs and GIFs and movies yeah, and, uh, totally. and memes and all that crap. And so I went through and just started deleting it all when I went up to Canada That's and Ottawa. That's the best back. part of a text message, though. I know, yeah. but you got to get rid of them eventually because they're just holding all that space right. for like Especially nothing. years and years of that. Yeah. yeah. Do you know how many but do you videos know how big of like the office can get? I have? No one ever tells me. Uh, it can just grow. It doesn't just grow, honey. It could. It gets to a final. Nope. It only gets to two terabytes and that's it. And it, that's 10 bucks a month. Yeah. So you might. Oh. Yeah. Worth it. So when you get to your. <laughs> but you're going to get to that two terabytes quickly. Yeah. If I'm not there yet. <laughs> well, we're going to ask you to leave a secret in our secrets jar. Wait, before we do that, uh, I haven't asked her the most important question. What's the most important question? I need to know about um, Canada's Got Talent. Yeah. Oh, okay. We've got to talk about yeah, it. Yeah. Yes. It's like the biggest thing going on <laughs> in her world right now. Well, other than Shania. Yeah, true enough. Shania and then Canada's Got Talent. Um, Yeah, the past month has been crazy. We... um. We just finished our first first run with Shania, which, by the way, has been such a whirlwind and so amazing and, like, such a gift. And to be able to, like, walk out and and say I'm opening for my idol. And I, we actually played Calgary, like, the venue that I first saw Shania oh. in. And I was like, I was sitting over there when I was, like, dreaming of being no on this way. stage. And so it was just like, oh, what a full circle Great moment. Vision. Yeah. And oh. we get back with her in a few weeks. And so she's just the coolest you know they always say like never meet your idols and she is the exact opposite of that she is just so down to earth so is she cool looking, so smart is she, Nashville? she um she has she like lives a lot of the year in switzerland oh, okay. she has a place outside of vegas when she does her residency there and okay. then she has you know a few places she bounces around she's shania yeah. she's the goat yeah. you know yeah. um, she can go where she, she can be wherever, she, go wherever she, wants. she wants but she's just it's so cool to see a woman at this level of her career like just Still just going and for it, And this age. and This, this age, like, yeah, she's 57 years yeah, old. She looks so hot. So good. Cheryl I will Crow. say, spoiler alert. Yeah, Cheryl Crow looks amazing. Yeah. Um, and she's like, I think she's, someone said that she's 60. That's insane. It's, it's just insane. so crazy. And they look like they're in their 20s. Yeah. Like, 
watching Shania in her encore, she actually comes out. Yeah, huge spoiler alert. If you're going to see Shania, then plug your ears. But <laughs> um, she actually comes out in the original That Don't Impress Me Much oh. or original Man I Feel Like a Woman outfit. Shut and she, like, up. it like hits me in the feels because it's like all this like cool production and dun, 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 dun. And then oh they like throw gosh, her up no out of like way. a toaster and she like shows out up. Out of a toaster? In, that's what <laughs> like they call them on toaster. stage. They like, they like pop up. They like pop up on the stage and she like pops up and she's in the original, like she's in like the full leopard print and you're like, <sighs> stop. What? And it looks like you're looking at the music video because she looks so so this good. goes to what we were talking about before about like people kind of like embracing the song that they're known for yeah. too of like not being like I'm not going to perform that I know everybody wants it but I'm going to do the stuff that I mm. connect with as an artist like actually embracing a little bit of what the fans want too in that way and just really being there for the experience of like understanding like what your what your fan base wants what yeah, your brand yeah. is I guess Yeah too. she leans into it in such a beautiful way and she looks like the same as mm. when she released as we could those songs one day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's been it's been such a dream come true. She's amazing. I love her so much. And she's a Pomeranian. I have a Pomeranian. And our Aww. dogs kind of became BFFs on oh, tour. So, so you got to get like, together for play dates life goals during the made. summer. Yeah. But um, but yeah, she's the best. And then at the same time, um, yeah, Canada's got talent. So I've been hosting this TV show. This for, TV show. Um, <laughs> this little tiny thing. <laughs> Maybe you've heard of it. Years. And it's been, it's been awesome. It's been so amazing to be able to give like a spotlight to all of these incredible humans. You know, I obviously talent shows have been, you know, the the in thing for the past while, I guess. But I I love shows like Got Talent, like AGT, CGT, BGT, all of them around the world, because they they showcase not only singers and musicians, but like acrobats yeah. and dancers. Mm -hmm. And and we had this woman um on this past season, her name was Jean Vieve Cote, and she She's like a noisemaker is what we called her. But she she stands on stage and you close your eyes and it look and it sounds like you're listening to a movie soundtrack. No. And she is the most incredible voice actor I've ever heard in my life. What? And yet, what kind of talent show would you ever think would wow. yeah. would have a stage for somebody like that? And she was amazing and always brought down the house. And you you would close your eyes and it looked like you were and it sounded like you were listening to like she did um a like safari and she did like oh, a rainforest wow. and then she did like like bringing you to the desert and like Santa Fe and it was just awesome. I'm going to show this so to, my, to my 10 year old Tucker because he can do all these weird sounds in this mouth and oh I my gosh, this I'll might send be you his next talent. She's amazing and so it's just been so rewarding to be a part of a show that, that gives a spotlight to humans yeah. that have this talent that may not right. have been discovered on any other stage, and yet we have a stage for you, you know? And we've also upped the prize, ladies. We've upped the prize next year to a million dollars. What? Whoa, that's so like life-changing. Like, it's truly life-changing. Wow. Like, it's truly life-changing. So I'm just, I'm so excited. I'm honored and proud to be a part of it. And, um, yeah, season three is going to kick off in a few months. Can't wait. Can't that's wait. awesome. Yeah, that is huge. Wow. So, Girl, you yeah. are, I mean, so even fun. though we're in the U.S., Amazing. we can still watch it. So. Oh, I can send you links. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all over social is it on media. TV? And it's on um, City TV. Okay. But look at you. You're all up hey, with your Hey, I know my networks. Canada, baby. But, um, but on our YouTube page, like, uh, everybody's performance gets put put on there. And so you can you Who can are the judges on CTV? Or so on it's TV. Howie Mandel. Oh, um, Scott Talent. Yeah, yeah. CGT. Ah, same CTV. CGT. So many acronyms. Um, Howie Mandel, Lily Singh. Um, I don't know if you know Lily. She's amazing. She kind of got famous on YouTube. She's a comedian. She's an actress. She just um, starred in, like, the... The Muppets Mayhem oh, movie. Which we love. Yeah. Yeah. She's such a badass. She's so cool. Um, and then Trish Stratus okay. from WWE, mm -hmm. who's like a mom and a wrestler, and she's like stronger than all the judges put together. Yeah. And she like lifted Howie in a I Oh, know, I love thing. that. So it's amazing. And then Cardinal Ofichel, who's a rapper, you know, he he had a big song with Akon back in the day. He's a music executive. Oh, yeah. um, he works for Def Jam right now and awesome. and in and r And so it's like we have a very like well versed, talented panel of judges um, who you know each have their are they their all Canadians in life? Is how are you Canadian? All Canadian. All right, I'm he's surprised Canadian. you don't have uh, Robin Thicke on there, but I know. I, know I mean, never say never. You know, maybe he can be a. a, a Guest judge, sure, yeah, <laughs> and then Ryan Reynolds. You should get Ryan. Reynolds. Oh my gosh, Ryan Reynolds, that would be Alanis amazing. Morissette. Like we can get Justin a lot of these Bieber, yeah. Sean Mendes. We'd loan you a, our friend Jay over here, but I'm sorry. Yeah, we have we have a Canadian. Jay, what are you doing in 
October. Okay. <laughs> Come up and judge some talent, will you? Come on. Our, our, our token Canadian here. I love it. I love it. I feel so at home. <laughs> well, thanks for being here. Oh, my gosh. Thank you this for having This was so fun. And now awesome. we get to play around Nashville when you're around, when you're not on tour and I, you're not in Canada doing your show. I'm so excited you're here. I've had so much fun. Do you know please, how I tracked you down? Please uh, Tell me. <laughs> how I stalked you? Oh, my gosh. Besides on Instagram, okay. it was uh, we share a massage therapist. Stop it. I got your number from her. I'm Our like, massage therapist is the best she's in the, the world. Best. And I don't know if you can have her number because I don't want her to get too no, busy that she she's already too busy. Us. She's got Patricia Heaton. She's but busy. She's amazing. Yeah, man. she is. She's, she's so good. That's all we've got to the stars. We've gotten a few of our guests here from her. Um, <laughs> we've got Caitlin Bristow. All like, sorts of HIPAA <laughs> violations happening here. What a what a <laughs> great woman though. She's so good. She's fantastic yeah. and i and of course through um actually our friend Vanessa Evigan who mm-hmm. was like our second guest ever on here or first yeah. or second Aww. But I love her. Vanessa is, um, that's how I met you the first time. Yeah, that's right. So Gosh. that was, and then I stalked, and then I internet stalked you. And Melissa then I stalked has you been trying to get you here since so season one. I have. We are on season seven now. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry. That's a terrible, um, you know, time no, that it's. No. You've been busy and our schedules are weird sometimes. I mean, yeah. I know we air on Wednesdays, but not necessarily always shooting them on Wednesdays. Okay. But yeah. Well, whenever you want me back, I'm here. Yeah. Please come good. back. We love you. And I, I, we didn't even get to ask you what you binge, like what you're watching oh, gosh. right now. So we've got to have okay, you back. Okay, great. Done. Yeah. Go love binge it. some stuff and come back. Or we should put her in book club. Well, as soon as she goes on tour, because she'll have to be a book, book club. I totally want to be on book club. I love books. Oh, our book club. Tiny book club's amazing. Tiny book club. There's only like four of us. Bring it. So <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thanks for being here, girl. Thanks, Appreciate ladies. It. Thanks for having me. 